Hello again. We've been talking about covert channels and systems, and we said that you know Bell and Lepadula is liable to leave a number of covert channels in the system. Today we're going to talk about a different way of looking at security in those in those sorts of systems. Right. Remember that on an earlier slide set we said if you've got a high-level subject and a low-level subject, and that it shouldn't be the case that the high-level subject is able to communicate to the low-level subject, but the high-level subject can take varying actions and the results be visible to the low-level subject. If you have that scenario, then that mechanism can be used to send information. We call that a covert channel, though if you think about it, the same thing is true of, of writing to a file contents if the, if the lower-level subject can read it. The high-level subject does something, the results of which are visible to a low-level subject. So, if it's the case that you don't want information to flow from high to low, then it had better not be the case that high can do anything that is visible to low, right? The, that observation is the basis of a very general security model, model called non-interference. Non-interference is one of a number of policies which are called information flow policies. Because what you care about in information flow policies is not things like who can read a file or who can write a file. What you care about really is more abstract. It's about where information can flow within the system. And if you remember, that was sort of the meta policy that we came up with for Bell and Lepadula. It had to do with information flow. And, and one, uh, one vocabulary term that's used frequently in this context is interfere with. So if the high-level subject is doing something which the low-level subject sees the results of, then the high-level subject is interfering with the view of the low-level subject. And that's what we want to avoid, those kinds of interferences. Okay, so how do we specify security within this context? Well, we, we specify it in a very general way. We just have a relation on the subjects of the system to say who can interfere with whom, or which subjects can interfere with which other subjects. Uh, and you can think of that as where information can flow. So for example, here's a policy with three subjects, S1, S2, and S3. According to the diagram, S1 is allowed to interfere with S2, and S2 is allowed to interfere with S3. And so our policy is exactly that, right? We have this relation. And so we, we say that S1 is allowed to interfere with S2 and S2 with S3. That's all there is to it. That's really the, that's really the basis of the security policy. Notice it's much simpler than Bell and Lepadula, but it has a lot of subtleties as well. Um, notice one thing we left out was uh, it's a reflexive relation. And so that means, of course, that anyone is allowed to interfere with themselves. And so certainly S1 is allowed to interfere with S1, S2 with S2, and S3 with S3. And we just left that out because it complicates the diagram, and it, usually that's just understood. OK, so a non-interference policy like this is more general than Bell and Lepadula and other types of MLS policies. What does that mean? Well, it means that you can take any MLS policy and rewrite it into a non-interference policy. For example, suppose we have a Bell and Lepadula system with these three uh, subjects at those three labels. We understand that there's allowed to, that information is allowed to flow, say, from C to A and from B to A, because the level of A dominates the level of, of B and C, right? And so, really, we have this this picture on the right. Uh, C can communicate to A, C can communicate to B, and B can communicate to A, and really, that's just a non-interference policy, right? And so, you can take it. You can take any MLS policy and turn it into a non-interference policy. And the rule is that S1 can interfere with S2 if the level of S2 dominates the level of, us, of S1. However, uh, it's not true that you can take any non-interference policy and turn it into an MLS policy. Right? Here's, an, here's an example, the first one we looked at. S1 can communicate to S2, and S2 can communicate to S3. But notice there's not an arrow from S1 to S3. If this were an MLS policy, there would have to be an arrow, because MLS policies are always transitive, which means that if A can communicate to B and B to C, then A can communicate directly to C. 
Well, the question that you might ask is, why would anybody want a non-transitive policy like this? Well, in fact, it's a very useful thing. Consider this scenario. Suppose you have a firewall that protects your local area network from, from arbitrary traffic coming in from the internet. Well, it, it's certainly the case that you want traffic from the internet to be able to interfere with your firewall. That's the point of it, right? And you want traffic from your firewall to be able to interfere with your local area network. The thing that you don't want is to bypass the firewall and have information flow directly from the internet into your LAN. I mean, that would defeat the purpose of the, of the firewall. And so in this case, you definitely want an intransitive policy. But if, if the mechanism that you had in place was an MLS policy, you just couldn't do this. You couldn't describe this situation. And there are actually lots of, lots of cases like this. Okay, so what did we, what did we learn? We've seen the beginnings of non-interference, which is an information flow policy, which is more general than any uh, MLS policy, right? And the idea here is that if you want to specify where information can flow in the system, why not do that directly instead of worrying about rules which constrain who can write a file or who can read a file? The, the policy is just specified by a reflexive relation over the set of subjects. Uh, which says which subjects are allowed to interfere with or send information to which other subjects. And non-interference is very general. In fact, any MLS policy can be rewritten into, an, into a non-interference policy, but not vice versa. Thank you.